Welcome back. So, all right. In our last video, uh, we were working with the uh, nice little dot matrix printer, and I actually ordered three black ribbons, and then once those come, I'll look at getting a color ribbon or two or three. Um, they're gonna get harder and harder to find the longer we go, so hopefully I don't have much of a problem finding a ribbon. So, um, but the black ribbons are still very much available. They're no longer in production, so they're just selling off whatever's left in inventory, so. That's the depressing um, side of collecting printers along with vintage computers. Um, so anyway, today we're going to talk about video memory and uh, the, the hassles therein. What's this? Oh, the installation manual for the overdrive chip. So I found a problem with this machine, and it's a doozy. Um, this computer actually does have... Uh, upgraded video RAM. It is a user upgradable um, <clears throat> option on these machines. In fact, if you look in the owner's manual, there should be a section on video memory. And uh, let's see. See if I can find it. So if the system is set for any SVGA uh, video mode or anything above um, uh, 640 by 480 16 color uh, mode, uh, we start to um, to get some artifacts on the screen. I end up getting artifacts all over the screen, and that is a very classic symptom of faulty video memory. So I just uh, confirmed with the owner's manual that the video memory is located, I'll show you where it is. Um, on a modern system, by modern I mean something made in like 2000, or so, or newer, that uses shared video memory and does not have discrete memory. The, uh, the symptoms that we see can be easily corrected uh, by replacing system memory. However, this machine uses discrete video memory, which was pretty typical back in the day. And uh, video memory was, on this system, can be brought up to one megabyte through the installation of um, little memory chips, I believe they're SRAM chips, and uh, it was an easy procedure that anybody could do, just a little bit of patience, it actually really isn't that hard at all. Now on the system that I had back in the day, which was, I, I mean really, it, it used the same logic board, um, same board but it had a a very different case and uh, we've got to remove all the expansion cards the manual says to pull power but yeah, I'm not going to do that so what we're going to do we're going to temporarily remove a few things here we don't need the modem we don't need the the NIC all right, here we go so a couple of things so this right here is your um, cache RAM, your cache memory, and over here we have our video memory. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull each one of these out and I'm going to spray some um, contact cleaner and we're going to put them back in. So normally you would use a chip puller, but I no longer own a chip puller. Um, although I think I do somewhere have a chip puller. I couldn't lay my hands on it if I tried. So, what I'm going to do is use a flathead screwdriver and we're going to gently, very gently, I actually need a wider one, sockets. Very carefully. I'm not even going to pull them out, I'm just going to reseat them. I'm just going to Loosen them up. And we're going to just pop them back in. Like so. I really wish I had a chip puller that would make this job a lot safer. There we go. Just, just reseat them. Thank you. 
What you don't want to do is pull them all the way out from one side. That is how you bend pins. But I'm also going to look up what these part numbers are. If this doesn't work, I'm just going to replace them. I believe these four are the onboard video RAM. This machine has, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, it has about, um, I think it's 256 kilobytes of onboard upgradable to one megabyte. And that's what we've got here. We've got one megabyte. That one's being a bitch. I gotta get myself a chip puller. Didn't think I'd ever need one again. <laughs> Last time I used one had to have been in the early 2000s. All right, I'll we'll just pop them back in. We'll fire it back up and see what happens. I don't think I need any of this to make the system run, so. I might get some driver errors, but that's okay. Just looking for a, uh, let's see what happens. Alternatively, I could pull all four of these out and just, yeah, we know there's an error. So we'll pull them all out if this doesn't work and see what kind of video mem or video modes it'll support. Um, I want at least 256 color. So if I can get that, I'll be happy. So, uh, you know, I can always pull those out. It'll still run fine. But it'll basically be a downgrade from what it, what it was. Okay, we got all that. Yeah, we know. Sound blaster is not there. That's fine. All right, we still have the video of the, the effects. So I've got some bad video memory for sure. The question is, which module is it? Yeah, there we, we still got those artifacts. All right. I think I can pull all four of these out. Let's do that. All right, let's see what, uh, what that did for us. So now this is basically set up um, as it was from the factory um, without any upgrades. Although it might have been ordered with these memory chips installed. So we're going to find out really if we have a problem with the onboard. So if the onboard RAM is bad, board, then we'll know pretty much as soon as Windows boots. If we still get those artifacts, you might have to dumb down the video mode a little bit. I think I have it set to 800 by 600. Okay. Actually, it didn't make a damn difference in the grand scheme of things. Let's see, do we still have the artifacts? So far, no. You know what? I think we got it. It usually happened pretty quick, just moving a few windows. So I'm launching SimCity. Um, so far, it looks like there's I think it's 512K or is it 256K of onboard video memory? Let's see what we got. It's in the book somewhere. And that's enough to support 800 by 600 at 256 color mode. So that's okay. That's just fine. Let's see if it tells me. Utilities. I'm gonna have to look through this book here. Here we are. Installing, removing, Sims cache memory. Let's see, SVGA Windows Accelerator Circuitry. Features, here we are. It has a built-in 512K of video memory expandable to one gig. So it supports 256 color, 1024 by 768, 16 color, 1280 by 1024, and 16 color. Wow, impressive. Oh, oh, these require one megabyte. So in all seriousness, I could leave it. I could leave it just the way it is, and um, and it wouldn't be a problem because I'm not going to be running it in anything higher than what we have uh, for video mode. So I think I can just leave it alone. 
But what I am going to do is I'm going to try to find more of these chips. So it looks like it's working pretty fine. I mean, there's no issues with the video quality. We could just either leave it alone or I can bump it back to what it was, a one megabyte of video memory, and um, just do that. Um, I've never had a VRAM chip go bad before, but it's always the first. So essentially we fixed the problem by downgrading the video memory to 512K, which is the default configuration. I'm going to go see if I can find some of these chips. These should be pretty common. I, I don't believe these are hard to, hard to come by. Let me quickly look at my phone and we'll see how hard they are to, to get. So I just looked up the chip on datasheetcatalog.com. Put in the number and this is how it reads out. So. Oops, where was I? It is a 256, 256, four bit, that could be the four there, CMOS DRAM, and the dash 60 is the memory speed, 60 nanoseconds. Um, and on eBay, they can easily be found, I imagine, $1.90 a piece. All right, so for $11.20, we will restore the video memory back to one megabyte. And there we go. That's not bad. So we're gonna put these aside. One of these, or one or more of these are still totally fine. I'm just gonna put these aside. There you go. Now let's put this machine back together and we'll put some more softer on it because why not? Eh, so it's, it's a it's a fun time. All right. <clears throat> so I I am fairly confident that we've resolved the video problem in this machine. Um, we can run it at a higher color, higher resolution mode, and it seems to be operational. It's fine actually. So. I've just installed a couple of games and we're going to see how it runs them. Um, so why don't we start off with Grand Theft Auto. Uh, this is the, uh, I believe Grand Theft Auto 2 is the, this is not the original Grand Theft Auto, but this one is the, I think the last of the top down versions. I actually used to play this game quite often and um, so let's go ahead and give it a try. So the CD-ROM drive appears to be possibly a 2x. It can't be much better than that. Um, in order for so Grand Theft Auto, it's an interesting game because the way this particular version is is designed, the sound effects play using the built-in sound whatever sound card driver is compatible with what you have for a sound card. Um, but it also plays a music soundtrack in the background. So it's actually pulling that off the CD. And that's one of the reasons why you have to have the CD in the drive. As a matter of fact, if you pop the, the, um, the Grand Theft Auto CD into any CD player, it will actually play the Grand Theft Auto background music. So let's go ahead and see what happens. So on drive C, I have a folder called GTA and GTA.bat. Here we go. Let's see how she runs. So the menu comes up pretty pretty quick. Run GTA. I've been running the low color version because this is a 486, let's not forget. It is still a 486. I, I believe this track is off of the sound card. Also sound card. In other words, these sounds are coming from files that are local to the machine. When you start getting into the music, it pulls it off the CD as a direct CD file. Or a... Um, so this right here, as far as I know, it's, audio, it's actually CD audio that it's playing. This isn't too bad for...
for a 486. I'm actually impressed. But then again, it's a DX266 at heart, so it's, you know, it's not too, not terrible. But 24 megs of RAM. See if we can up the image quality a little bit. I forget which function key does it. That's pause. Frame limiter off or on. That's the title. One of these function buttons, I think, does adjust the... Uh... Alright, let's steal this card and see what it looks like. Audio is off the CD. You can tell that fake Jimi Hendrix riff. I love it. Yeah, I gotta say the gameplay isn't too bad. Let me get out of the car. Of course, we are playing it in low and low res mode. tell this game was designed to run on at least a DX246. Uh, I just stole it. I, I hit the wrong button. I almost, I'm going to steal a bus. I'm going to steal this bus. Bosses are fun because they're so slow, but they're like a slingshot, you know? Not a slingshot. They're like, um, once they gain momentum, they can ram into anything. So they handle like crap. All right. So this game works. I'm I'm rather impressed with how well it runs. So there's that. Okay. That's impressive. Let's see. That's good enough. So that was Grand Theft Auto. My, one of my favorite versions, by the way. Um, so, where's the case for that? There it is. Alright. I want to show you, um, before we get into any more games, I found the, uh, the Intel Overdrive processor. Uh, this is a, a diagnostic and uh, demo disc. I don't know how many of these are left out in the wild, but I imagine they're quite rare. So I thought it would be fun to show you guys what that looks like. So when you install it in Windows, it actually creates a program group. Um, I believe it's under Intel Demos. There it is. Overdrive Processor Demo Diagnostics. I'm sure not many of you folks have actually seen this, but this is pretty cool because most of the time these disks were thrown away after the upgrade was installed because you don't need it. So this is a super 90s, early Windows era. Uh, I mean, this is this is just perfect, all right? So let's do the in installation demonstration. This tells you how to install your new OverDrive chip. And uh, we're gonna go to the um, next, let's see. Stay in the loop. Before beginning the installation process, please fill out the registration card and mail it to Intel. Before installing the overdrive processor, we suggest that you view this demo in its entirety. So basically what this is, is it shows you how to install the upgrade on your new machine, your old machine, sorry. I love how they show up an IBM XT case right there. I mean, that's an XT case because totally this would fit in NXT. Um, prevent damage to your overdrive processor by grounding yourself. Ground yourself by touching the metal back or side panel of your machine. Turn system off, unplug power. So this is basically a video instruction guide for the novice. Locate the original processor. This could be any i46 or 47 coprocessor. For the purpose of this demo, we'll use the processor that is circled. Tells you where it is, what to look for. You may find the processor on the motherboard on a, or on a removable card. I've never seen that before. In other words, like on a daughter card. Or backplane based system. 
may be located under your it's, yeah that's that's uh if inaccessible you may want to contact your dealer or refer to your system owner's manual you may find that you have one of two layouts a 486 processor with an empty overdrive processor socket that's what this machine has had as before continuing, here's a quick look at the removable removal of the 486 processor. Make a sketch of your 486 processor's orientation and find pin one. Look at that, there's pin one. I love the drawing, it's like kindergarten mode. If your socket has a handle, if your socket does not have a handle, well, you don't have a handle. You gotta, it's it's going to make me go through the whole thing, isn't it? I'm going to just zip through these and you guys can pause on whichever one you want to see. This probably, yeah it did, it came with a chip, a chip removal tool. Too bad that's missing. I could use it right now. Wrong, do not lift the processor by the processor socket. See, some things may seem obvious to most of you, but there's a reason why these Instructables are made this way. They probably had a test group of, of just random people picked to see if they could install this chip on a PC that they've laid out for them. Uh, it's probably why these things uh, exist. But this is history right here. Not many folks have actually seen this and not many will. Um, this is a video. Ooh. A video. I like videos. Align pin one on the on the processor with pin one on the socket corner. Align pin one. Yeah. Is this a video too? I think so. Oh, it's it's doing stuff. Yeah, there was a time when upgrade chips were a huge business. Well, they were a business. They probably weren't that big, uh, but they were big enough to where multiple companies were producing upgrade chips for both Macintosh and Windows machines. Um, Sonnet, or Sonnet, Sonnet uh, was the maker of upgrade chips for the Macintosh. And if you had a, um, a certain models of Macintosh that were not PowerPC, uh, equipped you no no I'm sorry these were mainly for power PC machines I think they would upgrade your older Mac to something a little bit better and uh, I remember at least one of my machines had one of those Sonic G3 Crescendo upgrade cards and, uh, and those are kind of cool however they were only useful if you had the enabler Far too often those enabler discs were lost and uh, they wouldn't work. Now this uh, tool also includes, this tool also includes a diagnostic uh, piece. And we're gonna run that right now. Processor detected Intel DX2 overdrive. Floating point unit detected on chip. Eight kilobyte on chip cache. Internal speed doubling circuit detected. So let's do a let's do a processor instruction test. Let's see if this thing wouldn't it be sucky if it failed? <laughs> like there's anything I can do about it now. Hmm. Passed with flying colors. Floating point conformance test. It's nice to know that 30 year old silicon still works. But for how long? Not bad. Looks like the floating point unit is 
good to go. Speed performance test. This is how we're going to know that we have a good upgrade chip. Performed 88,250,000 iterations of a 100 cycle loop in 10.71 seconds. Talk about bragging rights. Well, I think we're good. I think the chip is fine and everything's all good and well in overdrive world. So, anyway. There's another game I installed as well. <coughs> it's a uh, 3D pinball game, so let's take a look at that. It's Extreme Pinball. I believe it's by um, uh, Electronic Arts from way back. Um, so let's give that a shot. Let's do it. What's the exe? Extreme.exe. I don't think the CD is required for this, which is for electronic arts. That's just that's just crazy. And I believe Epic Mega Games is the company that made the Epic Pinball series. This has pretty cool sound to it. Let me turn the sound up. Begin. I love the smooth, scrolling graphics. In the faux dot matrix printout that's designed to emulate the um, the LED boards on some uh, pinball machines. So use spacebar Z in slash to nudge table. Use page up and down to scroll. Press enter to toggle scoreboard. Press pause. down I'm impressed Aww. I love the sound the music is just See if I can...
bad. Um, that's that's not bad at all. That's that's graphics, it's sound, all going at the same time. This machine handled it with ease. Um, it even handled Grand Theft Auto, which I'm impressed. I was not expecting that. Um, I have one more game to install before I call it a night for this machine, and that is Moto Racer. Copyright night. Oh no no no. Uh, okay, 1998. I don't think so. I don't think that's gonna run, but we'll try it. <laughs> um, we'll see what happens. I have high hopes. Let's see. Let's do a. Is there a readme on this? Let's see what the requirements are. Maybe. Read me Italy, Spain, Sweden, UK, France, EA help, FAQ, let's read the UK one. Welcome to Moto Racer! Uh, let's see, Require, this program requires DirectX. Um, doesn't show you know I'm not gonna I, if I recall this one was pretty intense and it didn't really run well on my Pentium 2 even so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna skip Moto Racer um, do I have any others I got Sega Rally but that one doesn't run so good driver driver is not gonna run clue may run or may not run Windows 95 98 no we're not gonna try that what about Wheel of Fortune 2nd Edition? Copyright 2000 requires Windows 95, Pentium 166. Police Quest I have, um, this is an older version of Police Quest. I think I tried to install this on this machine and it didn't really work out so well. Um, but we're gonna try it anyway. For some reason this game didn't like this machine. So, we're going to give it a try. Police Quest 1 VGA. Install.bat. We recommend installing this product in Windows. To do this, enter Windows and run setup at XE. I'm going to continue anyway. Uh, let's see. Enter install directory C colon backslash PQ. Please enter the letter of your install drive. I see. Please select your sound device. I'm going to go ahead and do... Um, we're going to we're going to skip the sound card right now. Have a joystick? No. Do I have a mouse? Yes. Extended? Yes. CD-ROM drive is E. This program requires, and then it just kind of blew off of me. Did it make the draw directory? It did. So let's delete that. Okay. Let's go back to drive E. There should be a setup.exe. Let's see if that works. Last time I tried it, it wouldn't read the disk. Cancel. And then it just hung. <laughs> just hung indefinitely. I'll take the disk out. The disk is not damaged. At all. It's beautiful. So, I don't know. This this title, not so good. Um, it sucks. But anyway, you get the point. Um, The only thing I gotta do now is once the new memory comes, the little memory chips, we're gonna put those back in, and uh, and we'll probably replay, re rehome this machine somewhere else within the house. I have very few places I can set up a computer, and um, I don't want it to keep it down here. I want it to go somewhere where it'll get enjoyed. So I can't. That's the one thing with with Windows 3.1. If there's a disk in the drive and you pull it out and it's not expecting it, it doesn't know what to do. It just goes freak, it just freaks out. It 
doesn't like that. Um, anyway, so that's going to be it for uh, for the Tandy, and uh, thank you all for for watching.